Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So now that we have this, we need to be able to save which permissions that we select here. So like this, at least I know the user has this permission to delete this. Admin has these permissions, etc, etc. Now, normally by default, admin should have permissions to everything. So maybe there will be no need to even give the admin uh, to select anything on the admin here. Uh, but we will leave it uh, be because at some point, if we give access to to change what the admin can do, you might lock yourself out of the website because you might remove a permission, for example, of adding rows or selecting permissions, etc. And then you save which one to be good. Anyway, in any case, uh, let's come down to the function functions and let's make that happen. So here we're going to put an if statement, first of all, a uh, row, we can grab this row right at the beginning like this so that we know what we are dealing with. And then we can say something like if row uh, like this is equal to admin, then automatically we give a return true to everything. This way the admin can have access to everything. Now, if you don't want that, just remove this, this if statement. Okay, great. We're going to remove this once we are done with what we are doing. All right, so with that in mind, uh, we are good. Let's see here. Now we need to be able to save these guys. Now, the way things are right now, if I go to this and browse, we have a row uh and then disabled now there's no way we can save all the the permissions here because this is just one row and it has many permissions so whenever you have something like that you have to create a new table that will map the row to the the permission right right so um what we can do here is let's create a new table that's what we need so new table this one is going to be called permission uh, mapping or permission map let's just keep it simple permissions map like this so we'll put an id and we're going to put um the row ID here, and then we're going to put the permission there. Just a single permission per row, okay? So I'm going to just uh, variable character. Permissions are not so long, so it's up to you. Maybe let's put 50 characters. You never know, maybe some permissions would get long as you want to describe more things. So maybe let's put it at 100. And I don't advise you go higher than that because then you won't be able to put a key. Okay, so the row ID is just an integer, of course. And ID there, that's fine. Auto increment, that's fine. Okay, then from there, let's hit save. And if unless I have forgotten something, probably not. Okay, so all of these guys need an I, an index because we'll be using, we'll be absolutely using them to to edit and all that. So permission, permission, permission. Okay, very nice. So what we're going to be saving here is a row ID. Let's say a user row has two permissions, right? We're going to save two rows here. Each one of those rows will have the ID of the user row, and then on the other side, a single permission that it's allowed to do. Then when we want to know all the permissions, we're just going to read all the rows that have row ID of a particular row that we want. So now with this, it means now we need a permissions map. Um, what's this? Uh, a permissions map model to be able to read from here. but. That's a little bit overkill, but hmm, let's see. 
you have to weigh the pros and cons. So maybe let's just, uh... hmm, okay, let's just use it. Why not? Let's just create one. Since we already have these guys in here. Mm hmm. Okay, let's see what requirements we have first before we go ahead and do that. So in order to save some data here, we will need to be able to submit this form. So I'll put a button here that says save permissions. Permissions can be many, so maybe we'll put this one uh, right here next to the add new. So let's go to rows right at the bottom where it says add row let's add another button here that says save permissions okay so this one should save okay let me remove it from here because i don't want this actually that's fine what i'll do is just move it outside the the link Put a type on this one so it doesn't submit. Type button. This one should be type submit. Uh, even if we leave it be, it will automatically be type, uh, submit. Let's put a form now. So div there, div there. But no, we don't want that form active when we don't have permission. So let's put that after this. Where is this? Right there. Okay, so duplicate that, put form. I'll duplicate this as well and put... Huh. Okay, so then that means this is outside the form. Eh. Anyway, it's okay. Method post. Okay, and... And then I need to grab this button and put it in here. Alrighty then. There we go. Not the best of places. Uh, let's try with a break tag to give it a new line. Hmm doesn't seem to do us much good because it's floating. So let me remove that float. Okay, I think it's fine even right there. Okay, so I can say save permissions. Uh, maybe this video camera. Uh, I don't know what to put there. I don't know what's... Uh, yeah. We we'll have to check the let's see is there anything with drive no <laughs> maybe hard drive or hard disk i don't know anyway we can check what the icon is later so as long as this works and if i click save it refreshes the page which is nice so now the, since this is a form, now these are proper inputs. So what we need to do is give them names for them to actually work. So I'll give them a name each like this. Now the thing is we need to know what row they represent. Okay. This is the ID of this particular row. So we need to know that. What do they represent? So in this case, the name will be the row id like so okay cool now the problem is again if we have an exact same name for each input it's going to override the others so each input has to have a unique name for it to survive otherwise we just have one input even though we have many on the page so with this we need to add something else to make it unique just on this particular row. So we have num here, which is fine. So we can use that instead. So let's use that name. We should just remember that the first number 
is the actual ID of the row. And then let's put an underscore and put num here. That way it's unique. Okay. Then on the other side, we can separate to grab this ID. Now the value should give us the permission that we have gotten here. So where is value? Okay, so there's nothing here. Let's just add one value is equal to and let's put permission. So we have all the information we need. We have the permission that we are saving and then we have its row ID, what row it's representing. So that's enough information to be able to save. So let me now refresh. Okay, there we go. So if I now inspect one of these, we're going to see what's going on. So as you can see here, there are two numbers on the name. The first one is the one that represents the row ID. So in this case, admin. And then the second one is just there to uh, make this particular item unique. So this, in this case, it means admin, which is two, can delete categories like that. All right, so if we grab the same one, let's delete categories on a different uh, row, we're going to see one comma four. So let me right click and inspect. And as you can see there, it's one dash four. So because it's a fourth item, but it belongs to uh, row ID number one. Okay, so with this in mind, what we need to do now is see what happens when we submit okay so let's go to the submitting section so this is the rows view and if we go to the admin section where is this one here okay so we have rows right there and now when we click um submit from here where we are right now. This is neither the add new row or edit or anything like that. It's just here where we are displaying, which is right here. So we need to uh, check for a submission right here. So to check for submission, we get this. So let's copy that and paste it. Oh, I need to add this after I read the rows like that and then close it. All right, so we don't need to check for row because we don't have rows really here. So what I'll do here, I'll just do a show and then just show what's in the slide post. And then I'm going to come back to row views and let's just make sure that we are able to post. So we are able to post, which is nice. So let's try that. So here I'm just going to click save permissions. So that thing showed up there, but unfortunately, uh, because of the, the view file, we won't see anything. So let's die there temporarily. So I'm going to resend that and you see it's an empty array. So let me just go back a second. This time I want to select a few. So you will notice that when I don't select anything, it's empty. But if I do select some, Oopsie daisy, what happened? Oh, I clicked the wrong button. Okay, so there we go. We select a few of these and then click save permissions. And then this is what you get in the post variable. So like I said, the numbers here are useless. They're just to give us a unique value because look at this, if we didn't have this number, we would have two and two, which cannot happen in an array. So this would be merged into one. But because they have extra numbers here, it makes them unique like this so they can survive as two separate items. So all we need to do now is to just grab this one because that's the row ID here. This, this means admin, admin and user, user, user. So all we are saying is that the admin can do two of these things, but the user can do three of these things because all of these one, one, one belong to user. So let's parse this information into something more readable. So right here, I'll leave this one as it is. I'll duplicate another one, remove the die. 
so that we can see what's going on here. So what I want to do is loop through uh, the post variable and then check for the key because we really want to edit the key. And then we have to ask the question, is this the correct key? What we want to look for is because we could submit other keys that do not match this description. So what we want is to look for a key that has a number, an underscore and another number over here. So we're going to use preg match like this. Okay, so if preg match, let's use uh, a regular expression. Now you don't need to use a regular expression. You can do this by string matching, though that I just think it's easier to use a uh, regular expression in this case. So we'll do 0 to 9 like this. And then we want to specify that it can be any amount of numbers. And then let's put a slash so we put an underscore. But I don't think we need that slash, but we can just leave it there. And then do again the 0 to 9 like that and plus. Now, uh, if you want to limit how many numbers we look for, instead of a plus, you can put curly braces and put number like 2. So this just means it should be two numbers. Now, sometimes it cannot be two numbers, so you can put 1, 2. Just meaning minimum is 1, maximum should be 2, or it could be 3 like that. Or if you want, you can just say one comma like that. It just mean a minimum of one at least. But in this case, it's okay. Let's just put a plus, simplify things. And there we go. So this describes a number, a dash, and a number. So as long as the key has this, then it's one of ours. So let's just check that for the key. And then if this preg much is correct, what we need to do is extract that number. So we're going to use now, uh, I just want to get the ID here. So first of all, let's go back to our table and show you what we want to do here because we want to insert data in here. So I want one row ID and one permission. So, which is kind of what we have here. We have a row ID, we have the permission. We just need to extract just the first number here as the row ID. So what I'll do is I'll just say row ID will be equal to, let's use preg replace. Now preg replace just works like preg match, only that instead of just matching it, it's going to make a replacement. So I want to remove the number we don't need. So we replace it with an empty string from the key, of course, like that. Now the pattern, we're just going to copy this pattern here because this is the pattern we are looking for. Now, unfortunately, this will erase everything. We don't want to erase the first number. We just want the dash and the second number to be erased. So let's remove this part and leave it like that. Okay, great. So now we have that and then we have a row ID. So from this row ID now, we can do an insertion right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just uh, insert. So we loop through the whole thing. And then here, I'm just going to say insert into uh, permissions table. So what do we use here? Let's just use the DB, uh, the DB class. Where is that? Have I... Have I activated it anywhere around here? Let's see, courses, Eesh, what am I doing? Let me zoom out a little bit here. So we're on rows and we haven't instantiated it anywhere here, but we do have row, so we can use that. So let me come down here. Where are we? We're right here. Okay, oopsie, oh my goodness, oh, there we go. Okay, so row now represents the class and we want to use just query on this one like this. So we're not reading any data, we are saving data, so I don't want to capture anything from this. 